Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, The Ninth Cup, where all of my readings focus on your soul's destiny and what you can do to embody your soul's purpose. I use tarot and Western astrology to bring you messages at this time. This is going to be a general reading for the sun into Aquarius and Pluto moving back into Aquarius. Kind of a big deal. So for those of you that are current subscribers, thank you so much for joining me and sharing your energy with me. For those of you that are new and stopping by, welcome. I'm Karen Michelle Yearwood. I help people like you along the ascension journey. So this general message for Sun into Aquarius and Pluto into Aquarius, this is going to be forming a broad square to Jupiter and Taurus. So I think we're all going to feel it um, pretty intensely. Now, it might not all be felt tomorrow. I'm recording this on the 19th, tomorrow on the 20th, or even the day after, but I think generally speaking we will feel this into the coming weeks pluto is a very slow moving planet the sun moves very quickly but pluto moves slowly and he's very potent he actually is going to um impact planets that are very close to him i, I would argue that you could probably take about a 10 degree orb with pluto and i know most astrologers do like two to five degrees but i think pluto especially since he's coming into a new sign he's leaving capricorn and coming into aquarius I think, you know, again, that broader um, orb <clears throat> can be taken into consideration when thinking about how this is going to be felt. As always, I read whole signs in my reading. So look at the whole sign of, whole sign house of Aquarius in your chart. For me, it's the 10th house. That is the public persona house, the career house, the authority house, the everything, you know, out in the open house. So, and I am an Aquarius sun, even though my sun's way ahead in Aquarius. It's at 23 degrees, so my sun won't be impacted just yet. But still, this is pretty impactful, and my ascendant is in, in Taurus, so um, at six degrees Taurus. So I'm, interesting, I'm interested to see how this is going to play out for me. Let me know in the comments where your Aquarius is, what house, do you have any personal planets, and any of the fixed signs. So that's Aquarius, Leo, Scorpio, Ta Scorpio or Taurus. Um, what else do I need to say about this? Yeah. Um... Pluto also is a generational planet. So once he enters into Aquarius, he's going to dip back into Capricorn later this year between, I believe it's September, um, the end of September, October, November, but then he will move back into Aquarius and stay there for about 20 years. So we're going to continue to see a lot of these collective shifts that we've already been seeing over the past year or so, um, but perhaps more intensely. Some of those social structures that were really etched in stone with the Capricorn energy are going to start to be dismantled um, slowly but surely. All right. So what does that mean for you? Um, let's go ahead and get the tarot. I'm going to use some oracles to get our overall energy. And then let's get a good nine card spread for this transit we also are coming up on a full moon in the leo so we're coming into aquarius season came here so fast i can't believe it's aquarius season already oh my goodness <laughs> so let's go ahead and get this overall energy i'm using the star codes astral oracle what do we have conjunction alliance do any of you have anything that is going to be conjoined with this transit? Anything in the early degrees of Aquarius or anything in the early degrees of, like I mentioned, any of the fixed signs, because you're going to get a square or an opposition if it's in Leo. Um, you'll get a trine if it's in Libra or Gemini. You will get a sextile if it's in um, Sag or um, Aries. All right. Debilitated discomfort. Some of you may have some debilitated planets. My son is in its well, it's not to be a debilitated, it's actually in its fall, but anyway, debilitated, right? Discomfort and ascendant. The entrance. Some of you could have aqua rising. So, this Pluto is coming into your first house over your ascendant if your ascendant sits in the early degrees of Aquarius. But that discomfort, um, I'm actually, this 14 card, I'm actually not even thinking about planetary placements. I'm thinking about how the ingress of Pluto into Aquarius could issue in some discomfort for many of us. So, Pluto uh, is going to end things, deeply transform things. It's not to be scared of. Please don't be frightened when I say that, but it is going to. Um, purify things. I think that's the best word for me to correlate with Pluto. It's going to purify, purge, and cleanse things. And in the process of that, things will naturally come to an end and, and complete themselves. 
maybe regarding something with yourself. We have the Ascendant here at the bottom of the deck. Let's put the deck right now. I usually do it at the end. Midhaven. Oh, wow. So Midhaven, career, career energy. So the Midhaven actually floats between the 8th and 11th houses. But for some of you, it could be wherever your, um, wherever your Aquarius is. So some of you could have your Midhaven in Aquarius or maybe even Capricorn. And so it's going to be impacted by that ingress um, of Pluto and the sun at the same time. So rare event. We're not going to see this ever again in our human, in this human lifetime. Uh, Pluto, again, it moves extremely slow and we'll never see a conjunction with the sun um, at these degrees. Okay. Like right when it's leaving one sign into another, we'll, we'll never experience that again. Um, as, as well as the square to Jupiter. I believe we'll never experience that as well. If we do, it will not be at the same degree. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I just was thinking for a second. I just was getting a download with the conjunction and alliance card. I think there's going to be some severing of relationships that have been in place for quite some time. I think I've channeled that already, though, in many other readings. Um, but with the discomfort and the alliance and the ascendant, that feels to me like someone going off on their own. That's like eight of cups energy for me is what I'm getting. Not necessarily the meaning of these oracles, but again, I'm channeling for a specific transit and intuitively. So let's go ahead and go to the tarot then. Let's get to the tarot. Let's use my Keepers of the Lights, one of my very favorite decks. And we'll get a good nine card spread. I'll put this here over to the side. And let's go. All right, first we have Page of Swords, the Chariot, the King of Swords. All right, Page of Swords, Chariot, and the King of Swords. Definitely moving on to something that's more enlightening. Um, something that is going to be fulfilling for you intellectually. So this could be job oriented, this could be school oriented, or just something around your craft or your trade, wanting to learn more, be more effective, more efficient in whatever it, your subject matter is, becoming a subject matter expert, but moving into an environment or setting where you can effectively do that. You know, the Page of Swords, Pages are messengers, but when I see the Page of Swords, this is like someone taking the initiative to learn about something. You're reading up on things, you're getting information, you could be reading over contracts, you know, maybe you're getting a proposal or sending out a proposal of some sort. And the cherry card is the movement, right? The movement once you've gotten the green light or you've gotten the understanding or whatever. And the King of Swords to me is kind of like on the other side where you end up in that King energy. Not gender specific, but you're in this energy of like, I know that this is my um, this is my area of expertise. This is my experience. You're confident speaking about it. You know you can teach about it. You can speak about it, and there's no more kind of being in limbo or kind of waiting for other people to give you the thumbs up. You know I think many of you are like being promoted or you're graduating or you're again you're learning something new. You're uh, adding on to what's your current sphere of knowledge is on a particular topic and pluto just as a reminder is a powerful planet like it it represents power right how we embody power and can join with the sun even more so like how you know we emulate that so it can be shadow side of it can be inflated egos light side of it is just you are um like i said very confident and you're very self-assured, you're very much convinced and you have a high level of conviction in what it is you have to offer and people see you as that. Um, yeah, you're, you're coming through as more powerful, more steeped in your power and your, your knowledge. So I like that first row. Let's see what else is going on. This will be the challenge row. Kind of current energy challenge and what's on the other side. So the tower card came out first, 10 of pentacles. And the cards flipped. I didn't take them, but the first card on top of the chunk that flipped was the devil card. Queen of Cups. All right, so the challenge is the Tower, the Ten of Pentacles, and the Queen of Cups. Um, tower energy with that Ten of Pentacles right next to it. <coughs> Excuse me. Challenging maybe um, lineage or uh, family norms. Maybe you're expected to go a certain route in your profession or even in your personal life, the decisions you make, and you're going left of that. 
Um, so it's kind of coming through as tower energy because you're disrupting kind of what has been done generationally in your family. Queen of Cups, really finding the balance going in. We're going to center. I'm getting a hermit energy with this Queen of Cups, actually. Um, so removing yourself from any kind of toxic energy, anything that's like... Uh, low vibrational you know naysayers people kind of in your ear about different things you're really like silencing that out and going inward and seeing how you feel about it emperor right is at the bottom of the deck right now and emperor energy could be father energy all right so you could be getting things from a father figure a male role model you could be trying to get into this emperor position you right remember the king of uh swords is here king of swords is a little bit of a lower octave of the emperor right so there could be something that's challenging either you maintaining that position in some scenario or um, situation in your life, or it's another person that has this energy and they're challenging you. Um, you know, but again, this tower energy, I'm not getting a, a feeling of things ending or coming down. It's more so like a disruption of what is quote unquote normal or regular. Um, Ten of Pentacles here again, it's like familial. It could be related to inheritances. Um, or anything that has been related to your income over a long period of time, right? So again, career-wise, maybe you have done a certain role or you've been, you know, making a certain amount of money for this amount of time, but there's something that's going to disrupt that a little bit. Not necessarily decrease the amount of money, but there's something different here and it's it's left of wherever you have been. It's different. And remember, Aquarius represents that as well. Aquarius is literally the the black sheep of the zodiac and um we also have, uh, so the sun is conjoined with Pluto and Aquarius at zero degrees. We have um, Jupiter down in uh, Taurus. I say down because I'm thinking of my chart, but how my chart's configured, but over, right? It's a square to um, Jupiter in Taurus. And we also have Uranus in um, Taurus as well. And later this year, we're gonna experience a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in the sign of Taurus. And so that is gonna be a lot of this energy that I'm feeling again with things that are normal or stable being kind of uprooted and something new and um uh progressive or like i'm getting the word in ingenuity like coming in right and so that could affect us in our families and our personal lives as well as collectively so interesting let's go ahead and get the um the outcome here what is the outcome oh beautiful the star that's the card of aquarius nine of wands one final push and the justice energy. I like that. I want to clarify for the nine of wands. Clarifier for the nine of wands. Nine of cups, two nines. Yeah, so we're coming through. Let's get a clarifier for that queen of cups below the um, justice here. The judgment, yeah. self actuality self-actualization phoenix rising energy bottom of the deck is the magician another major major arcana so on the other side of this storyline right and so this is just the energy kind of as pluto's coming into aquarius conjoined with the sun squaring broad square to jupiter and taurus star energy healing right the future hopeful for the future believing in the future believing what's on the other side of whatever that's challenging right now, whatever is at a standstill, whatever is at a halt, um, whatever doesn't allow you to step into your true greatness or be seen for your true greatness, really it's coming to a close, whatever that blockage is. All right, so this is like a clearing energy. And the nine of wands, again, one final step, kind of breaking through to your abundance, nine of cups for you, nine of cups, the inspiration for the name of my channel, your emotional stability, you know, your sense of freedom, your sense of, um, this is who I am and I'm really only going to tolerate those people who are in alignment with my greatest good, right? And I don't mean that in a selfish way, but in a way that um, puts self-respect at the forefront. Um, what did I? Oh, yeah. At the beginning of the reading, I was getting an eight of cups energy and here's the nine of cups. So obviously nine of cups comes after the eight of cups, but it's like once you've kind of stepped away from whatever it is that um did not service you or did not basically allow you to be in your own power it comes to an end in some way um 
it's a general reading and honestly I would have to pull another spread to really get the details on what what that blockage is but the nine of wands says here that it is something that has been long-standing just like with the ten of pentacles because the nine of wands oftentimes represents patterns and it takes a while to establish a pattern um, but the justice energy here is to make things equal make things right make things fall in harmony balance things you know truth and clarity is coming through so I really love this um, for this energy for Pluto um, I'm looking to see what this is the moonology the moonology deck I haven't used that in a while I want to get some oracles to wrap up the reading Take time to breathe out. Disseminating moon. Take time to breathe out. Oh, I love it. The end of a tough cycle approaches. Full moon in Capricorn. The end of a tough cycle approaches. Capricorn energy. We're moving out of Capricorn. And a time to give rather than take. New moon in Virgo. Time to give rather than take. That Aquarian energy could be some giver energy too. Bottom of the deck, hold your vision. Hold your vision. I like this. I like this energy. I would like to get another series of Oracle decks because I actually feel like there's a little bit of, I'm getting like a, um, a split storyline here with this energy. Someone other challenging you or a situation you're in his is challenging you like it's a person that's emulating the challenging energy or it's a situation that is challenging so this is the love oracle card um excuse me the um <laughs> island time wellness they're love oracles but i actually feel like whatever these oracles are actually going to be are going to help me reveal to you what this is hammer sabotage rebuilding interrogation repetition persistent working on it yeah so maybe someone has tried to sabotage you or sabotage something that you have worked on or something that you've started interrogation repetition working on it the phoenix here's that judgment energy new phase rekindle renew transformation growth change mind that definitely can be pluto as well I think the judgment energy is very plutonic. Definitely plutonic. And finally, the sword and the rose. Clarity, truth, revelation, solidarity, force, honor, protection, power. So maybe this is, okay, so maybe this is it. Some of what has held you back may actually be held in secret. Like this could be like subconscious, like you don't really know, like it's not something that's playing out in real time, like where you can see it and, you know, speak to the person. It's something that is more unwritten, unclear, um, subconscious. Bottom of the deck is the ax. Break up, separation, stop the pattern, silent treatment, abandonment. Yeah. So we have like two cards here that speak about separation and patterns and then silent treatment here too. So it's almost like whatever this is, is unspoken. But the thing is Pluto uproots what's has been hidden and it's going into an air sign aquarius air the element of air naturally is about communication so let me know in the comments um how this is going playing out for you right we should already really be feeling this transit and we will fill it into the the coming weeks um what house is your aquarius in do you have any personal planets in aquarius in the early degrees like zero say to five degrees or any of the other fixed signs um, i'm interested to know so thank you guys so much for being here i hope to see you in the next reading and be sure to thrive bye